The only people who don't want to disclose the truth are people with something to hide. The impeachment coalition, now 22 states long, this was a post of email. There's a company called, or an operation called uh, North American Law Center, and they've written up some, uh, the, uh, some paperwork for impeachment, articles of impeachment. And I'll give you just a couple of excerpts here. An article, an article 2, malfeasance of conduct and abuse of power in the old laws. There are numerous instances, instances of it in here. And the laws that are referenced are in the back of this as well. He has directed and overseen the intentional false reporting of false events, soaring leaders, national security failures, foreign policy failures, foreign intelligence failures, the misrepresentation reporting of the true nature of involvement overseas and the issuance of false information concerning the death of numerous military personnel and military contractors in an effort to conceal the level of invasion of our own nation's assets. I mean, there are a lot of things in here. Article 1, and you're familiar with this and the reason for my filing voter fraud charges in 2009 and again in 2017, and we're not finished. Article 1, usurpation of the Oval Office by a criminal identity fraud. Now, there are numerous articles in here about that, but the information that talks about the identity fraud is on this CD. It's provided by information from Sheriff Joe Pyle's office. And I'm going to include a copy of this for you. I don't know what Congress is going to do with it, but there are 24 states. There's more, more states building. We're trying to get Congress to do something because something has to get done. Let me just ask you at this point, and uh, you probably are going to need to, and you've shared a lot of this stuff with me over the past many months, and I appreciate that. What, what objective are you trying to achieve? Justice. Okay, but, but justice. All right, justice. Does justice occur after an impeachment vote, which lacks the power for removal because you and I both can do the addition and subtraction over in the other body? Well, that needs to change. There are other things. Okay, and I agree, but that, that I may agree with you, but that is not the reality that we have to live with right now. I think impeachment needs to be interchangeable with indictment. This guy can be held for felonies just on what he's done right here with the information that Sheriff O'Pyle's office has come up with. Well, indictment is not conviction, and indictment is not removal. We've all, all seen that in well, various instances. We, the, the, the idea here is to get something going because Congress isn't doing anything. This president can do whatever he wants. Congress is has, has absolutely no control. There's personally nothing you can do. Well, we have had a lot of discussions over the years, and I, and I appreciate your passion on this. I really do. 2010, 2009 and 2010, when the president was in his first two years in office, he had 54 vote majority in the House of Representatives, 60 vote majority in the Senate. There was virtually nothing that could be done to stop. And what we saw during that time was Obamacare and Dodd-Frank didn't get the facts from Markey, which they're trying to now get through regulation, but they got a big chunk of their agenda through in the first two years. 2010 election occurred, Republicans reestablished as majority in the House, and basically the country sent a restraining order to the administration. And while it may not have been as effective as you wanted, while some days it may not have been attractive or efficient, we have functioned as that restraining order. I, you heard me say it the other night, my, my biggest fear going into the 2012 election was that we'd end up with the same three people on the other side of that. And that's exactly what happened. The American people, in their wisdom, chose the same president, the same majority leader in the Senate, which was Harry Reid at the time, the same Speaker of the House, by, by virtue of how they cast their votes in November 2012. I will never understand the, the, the outcome of that election, but that's what happened. And, uh, and that's what we all must live with. It did change a little bit in 2014. You're right. It, 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 it is sometimes disappointing that the Senate will not do more with the power that they have in their hands. And they do have power that they have not exercised. I'm hopeful that we're going to see 
perhaps some evidence of that when we get back in September, but I will agree there have been times that it's been pretty disappointing. But the fact remains, there was a restraining order placed on the administration in, uh, with the start of the Congress in January of 2011. Spending did reduce. It may not have reduced as much as you wanted. We did pass the Budget Control Act in August or July of, of 2011, which is known as the sequester. Now, I've got people on, on my side now who are trying to un, unravel the sequester. I don't think that's a good idea. I realize that it puts a lot of constraints on discretionary spending, but we ought to be able to do that. There is plenty of money that the government has to dispense on the discretionary side. It needs to be done more efficiently. I am not in favor of unwinding the sequester. If anything, I think we ought to find other applications where that might work. Because as we've all seen, any time you try to cut the budget, any time you try to cut spending, every line on that spending bill has a constituency, and it becomes difficult. The only thing that works, in my opinion, is across the board cuts. That's what we saw with the sequester. I think it needs to happen again. We'll see if anyone has the courage to do that. We're $19 trillion in debt. We're this, the Republican sweep hasn't done anything. John Bader and Mitch McConnell has passed every appropriations bill he's wanted from the illegal aliens uh, to health care. He's wrecking this country. We want to do something to stop it. We're trying to do something to stop it out here. I'm sure there are probably some other people out here that feel the same way. We're trying to put a stop to it. Since Congress doesn't seem to have the will to do it, we're going to try to do it. And I don't disagree with you. I would just, I would just submit to you that uh, the brakes have been applied more than just attack. The brakes well, have been where applied. Where have they been applied? I haven't seen it. I mean, what was the sequestration? 2.6 percent across the board cut may not have been enough for you. But by golly, that was the first time that had happened since the Korean War. 2.6% of what? Of the, all of the discretionary items. And how much is that? Um, well, the total discretionary budget is uh, around a trillion, two hundred million dollars. Well, I, I appreciate the effort. I really do. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, I really feel that if we get some kind of action going on this administration, it's gonna, that's going to put the brakes on it. I don't know how else to tell you to do it, but we see what's going on out here in uh, flyover country, and it's not good. It's like a cat, a pole has been cast over this country. Everybody's down, everybody's upset, nobody knows what's going to go, what's going to happen. This healthcare thing is a total mess, it's a wreck. He's borrowing, he's stealing money, he, he actually, he didn't even ask me for an appropriation, he took money from the, from the treasury to pay off some of the insurance companies that didn't get money for, that they thought they were going to get from uh, People join in this fake, phony healthcare program. Uh, now he's taking it from the, from the IRS. And nobody says anything. Congress doesn't do anything to stop it or can't do anything to stop it. It is absolutely maddening. We've got to do something about this. And I would just submit to you, you know, again, it may not be enough for you, but that is happening. Well, I, I, I don't again, see it. We, can, we, I, we can continue this discussion. I'm sure we will. But I had, I'll tell you I, what, let's, let's move on and let some other people have. I had a discussion with John Mayer's office the other day. And um, I, didn't get, I didn't get a good answer. Basically the same thing. They're kicking the can down the road. Um, but I, I, I'm not going to stop. The, the momentum is building. Uh, where's the Mobile's birth certificate.com has got radio shows. Yes, very important guests coming on. Um, the North American Law Center, they're pushing ahead with this. Uh, ProtectOurLiberty.org is another outfit that's got information on natural born citizens. We want to support that. Ed and I have a disagreement over who I'm supporting for president. <laughs> uh, anyways, I, I would really appreciate it if you would at least take a look at these documents and um, see for, for yourself what you think. But, uh, we're going to support an impeachment. We're going to support some kind of legal action against this man because he's a problem. And we shouldn't vote for anything that has anything to do with trade promotion authority. This Iran thing, his chief advisor in the White House is an Iranian Muslim. Hillary Clinton's advisor is a Muslim. He's filled the White House and upper cabinets with uh, Muslims. Uh, Muslim Brotherhood, by the way, uh, who were on our terrorist watch list. I mean, what, what, what's going on here? It's absolutely insane. I can't believe that there are no more Congress. There are a few, 
they're saying something and doing something, but it's certainly not enough. So, so I appreciate your passion on this. We have talked before. I know we'll talk more. And uh, we'll watch the debate tomorrow night and tell me what you think. I'll leave the uh, paper. All right, thank you. The only people who don't want to disclose the truth are people with something to hide.